Okay. Now let's look at Mark chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 7 through 10. So what I'm going to teach to you is that uh, I'm not really satisfied with a lot of apologetics concerning Islam. So Muslims, this is their favorite argument. Muslims will quote this quite often to you Christians. You ready? This is going to be their famous argument to you Christians, and you got to know this. Jesus never declared himself to be God. Well, you know, the Bible says right here, no, 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 no. They're going to say, no, not what the Bible says. Not what those writers claimed. Yeah. To, because they believe that the writers misunderstood Jesus' true teaching. And they deified Jesus when Jesus did not intend to be deified as such. They're going to say this, show me where Jesus claimed to be God. And then Christians mostly will find none. And Muslims, they'll use that as an excuse, said, aha, see, we win. See, Jesus didn't claim to be God, so Jesus is not God. And some poor, unfortunate Christians who don't study their Bibles so often, they're going to gnash their teeth, and they're going to chew on their fingernails and go, oh, my goodness, maybe Jesus really isn't God after all. Maybe Jesus didn't declare himself to be God. Maybe we just took it as a worship of him. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you got to stop doing that. So I saw some videos online and the stuff online and uh, famous people who defended and tr tried to show Jesus declared himself to be God. Some of them are really good, but most of them I'm not really content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give a satisfactory, a satisfactory answer uh, of more clear verses where you can definitely prove that Jesus declared himself to be God. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. All right, we're going to look at Mark chapter 2, and we'll look at verses 7 through 10. So here's one of them. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but who? God. God only. Okay, so case number one. Case number one in Mark chapter 2 and verse 7. These people said that only God can forgive sins. Only God. Amen. So only God can forgive. But the thing is this, is that who is the one who declared himself to be the person to forgive sins. Keep reading. Uh, verse 8, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath what? Power on earth to forgive sins. So God only can forgive, right? But Jesus declared to himself to be the person who can forgive sins. See that? So thus Jesus, what did Jesus do? Jesus identified, declared himself to be God to forgive the sins. Now look at John chapter 18. John chapter 18. Here's another verse. John chapter 18. And then we'll look at verse 36. John 18 verse 36. Another thing is that Jesus said... That the kingdom that he was preaching, he said it was my kingdom. That's what he said. My kingdom. That's what Jesus called it. So in John 18, 36, the kingdom that Jesus was always preaching about, he declared it to be his own kingdom. Okay, so I can see there's going to be a little bit of confusion here, so let me just uh, make this little borderline. This is why dispensationalism is important. Otherwise, you're going to make confusion. You've got to make a borderline. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, forget what I just said. Look at John 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, what kingdom? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Okay, Jesus says the kingdom is his. Now, do you realize how the kingdom that he was preaching about, what was it called? Kingdom of what? God. And Jesus called that what? My kingdom. Do you know how many times kingdom of God is mentioned in your Bible? Around 50 times. So Jesus, throughout, what was the, his gospel? The gospel of the what? Kingdom. It was the gospel of the kingdom. He always called this kingdom, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. But then he was declaring right here, my kingdom is not of this world. My so he declared himself to be God. All right, let's look at case number three right here. All right, but let's, uh, 
Let's jump to Joshua chapter 10. We're going to go to Joshua chapter 10, verse 30. Uh, not Joshua, uh, John, excuse me. John chapter 10, verse 30. John 10, verse 30. And we'll look at verse 30 through 33. All right, here's probably the most famous verse to defend where Jesus declared himself to be God. So this is used by apologists against the Muslims. We're going to look at John chapter 10, and we'll look at verse 30 through 33. Now, here's an important side argument that I want you to remember, okay? A side argument is Philippians 2. Here's the thing. If Jesus declared himself to be God, why isn't that clear and all over the Bible? That's the question, right? So that's what, Muslim, uh, that's what Muslims will try to argue with you. Showing that Jesus, it seemed like he was discouraging the notion that he is God. But that's not the case. You know why Jesus Christ would uh, not label himself to be God, but indicate it? Many times he would indicate and not say it point for point that he is God even though there are some verses that he did say he is God. So some verses he did, but most of the time he doesn't. And if he does declare himself to be God, it's an indication. There are only a few cases where he clearly said he is God. And there is one case that he did declare himself to be God, but it's to a different person, which I'm going to show you. But here's the case. Do you know why Jesus did that? Because of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, what did the verse say? Jesus, who being in the form of God, see, he is God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. That's why. If Jesus declared himself like, I am God, I am God, not the humble human nature of Jesus Christ, then we get rid of one of the most important doctrines in the Bible, the humanity and the humiliation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had to humble himself so that he can die on the cross, so that he can be in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Because he, if he declared himself to be God and all the people took him as God, he would have lived a comfortable life rather than as a servant. See, that's why a lot of time Jesus Christ, he'll mention the Father to be God. And he'll separate the identity. But that just proves the Trinity concept even more. God the Son, Jesus Christ being the human nature, God the Father, right there. See, that's the reason why. So this is an important side note you have to bear in mind. That way, you can show them why Jesus Christ was indicating and not really clearly saying it. But Jesus Christ knew that he was God. If he didn't think he was God, why would he indicate that? Another thing is, is that if he didn't think he was God, why would he clearly say that? Go to John chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 30. I and my father are what? One. Look, he's declaring himself to be the same God as the father. Do you think the Jews thought that as, oh yeah, he just meant unity, you know, he just meant, no, no, look at this, verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. See that? Now, Jesus is asking them why they're stoning him. They're going to say why. Verse 32, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do he stone me? Because Jesus declared himself to be God, that's why. But look at verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for what? Blasphemy. Because he declared himself God. Keep reading. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself what? God. See that? That is very plain. So this is very clear that Jesus is making himself the same God with the Father. Amen. Now, some of the critics are going to use this verse on you. Jump to the next one, all right? This is what critics are going to use. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. So in verse 34 through 35, critics are going to try to claim, well, when Jesus was saying God, he meant a lesser God. Because in verse 34, Jesus was saying in the scripture, those, uh, those beings were called gods. Not like God the Father himself, the one true God, but the lesser gods or the false gods. 
So that's what Jesus is uh, trying to point out, some kind of lesser God, lesser deity. That's what he was declaring himself to be. But that argument is very weak because look at verse 36, the very next one. Keep reading. Don't just stop at 35. Keep reading verse 36. Say ye of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the who? Son of God. Okay, let me ask you a very easy question. Jesus talked about the next verse, these little gods, right? Who is greater, this son of God or these little gods? Son of God. So when Jesus Christ was declaring himself to be God, he wasn't declaring himself something less of a position like these little gods. He's pointing out an elevated position here Amen. because he realized that he's son of God. Son of God is greater. It's greater than this. Jesus Christ was laying down a foundation here. If you can call these little guys little gods, is it hard for you to believe when God has set up these little gods that he can have what? The higher being, son of God? And not only that, this higher being, you got to realize, cannot overlook the fact that I and my what? Father are what? One. That's what he's pointing out. Did he say these gods were one? No, those gods were not one with uh, God the Father, but the Son of God was. See, that proves right there he's talking about capital G. But not only that, Jesus, in that verse, when he was quoting the verse, did he say capital G or little g? Little g. The Jews, were they thinking little g or were they thinking capital G? Look at that verse. Because thou makest thyself God, capital G, at verse 33. See, the Jews knew what he was talking about. All right, more sense. All right, now let's look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. It's going to get even better, the evidence, all right? This is just small stuff. I'm just giving you better and better evidences, all right? We're going to look at John chapter 8. And then we're going to look at verses 58 through 59. And then I want you to also turn to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. Okay, you know what Jesus did? Jesus, there is no doubt he declared himself to be God because he used one of the most forbidden things you can ever use that Hebrews don't even, that Jews don't even say it today. The name of God, the, na the highest name, the name of God, tetragrammaton, okay? So he declared himself by using the tetragrammaton. I am. Look at John chapter 8, verse 58. John chapter 8, you'll read verse 58. This is one of the most unfavored verses that Muslims know you're going to use, all right? They know you're going to use this. Verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I what? Am. am. What did the Jews do? Oh, yeah, he's just saying, like, I am, like, I am Sam, green eggs and ham. No, look at verse 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him. See, because they knew that Jesus was using the tetragrammaton. I am that I am. But if that's what he called himself, look at Exodus 3, when the tetragrammaton is first used, all right? Look at Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14. I mean, what do you think Jesus was talking about before Abraham was I am? You think he was quoting Dr. Seuss or something like that? Come on, man. What do you think he was doing right here? He was using it for a specific reason that would make them stone him. Now, use some common sense. I know you don't want to admit it, but he was trying to say he's God. Yep. Now, look at Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. That's God's name. God's name. Verse 14. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Who I am has sent me unto you. That's his name. It gets better and better, folks. We're going to look at, uh, well, I'm not going to, we don't have time, so we're going to look at two, okay? But we're going to skip this one. John 14. We're going to skip this one. John 14, verses 7 through 9. Okay, now jump to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And then we're going to jump to Matthew chapter 4, okay? That'll be the last one. Matthew chapter 4. All right. 
it's going to get better and better, all right? The evidence is going to get better and better if you think that's good enough. All right, John chapter 14, verse 7 through 9, which we skip. Philip said, show us the Father. Can we see the Father? You know what Jesus told Philip? You, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Oh, that is strong right there. So Jesus really declared himself to be the same God as the Father. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The Father is God and Jesus is God. They're the same God. Now, look at John chapter 20. All right, John chapter 20. And then the other one is going to be Matthew 4, right? Now, check this out, folks. All right, let's, Jesus never said that he's God, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, look at John chapter 20. Well, the disciples were misunderstanding when they said Jesus is God. They totally misunderstood. Uh, if they misunderstood, Jesus would have corrected them. But Jesus did not correct them. Why? Because Jesus wanted what? He re realized he's what? I know you don't want to say it. All right, John chapter 20. Look at verse 28. What did Thomas say to Jesus? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my what? God. God. What did Jesus do in verse 29? Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have what? Believe. Do you believe Jesus is God? Amen. You are more blessed than Thomas. Amen. Jesus said Thomas should have known that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was rebuking Thomas. He, he wasn't uh, saying, oh, Thomas, you made a mistake. You set it out of shock. No, Jesus would have rebuked him. But the very idea Jesus was, in, <laughs> Jesus was accepting it shows that Jesus was committing blasphemy or he was accepting himself to be what? God. He was accepting it. And if you don't believe it, jump to Matthew 4. Because Jesus, he realized God should be the only one that's worshipped, nobody else. So why was he accepting it from Thomas? Look at Matthew chapter 4. Look what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 4, in verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou what? Serve. So notice right here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Jesus says, You only worship God. That's what he said. So he's confirming right here that he is God in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Wait, pastor, you made a mistake. You said Matthew 4 here, not there. This is the best. You ready for this? Here's the thing. Jesus never declared himself to be God word for word, clearly I am God, to people because he had to prove his servanthood. But he did it to one being. On, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6. And saith unto him, Satan says to Jesus, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt thou dash thy foot against a stone. Satan was tempting Jesus, and Jesus replied at verse 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt who? The Lord oh, booyah! I should get a million dollars for this, man. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, though, uh, if you Christians want to defend your faith where Jesus declared himself to be God, you guys got to use this, okay? This is the best verse, okay? You guys got to start using this. So use Matthew 4, 7, all right? If you don't want to beat around the push with all this, just jump to Matthew 4, 7. Boom, you got it. Jesus... What did he say he was? Jesus says he's God. But why didn't he do that with the other people? The reason why was he had to prove his servanthood to man. But he didn't have to do that with Satan. He knew Satan knew who he was. So he's the only being, Jesus said, right in front of his face, that I'm God. You know that. So you don't tempt me. 